So you're in AP Environmental Science and you're wondering what to expect. Well, it's a good thing you came here because I'm Mr. W and I teach AP Environmental Science so I know all the things. What you're in for is the most interesting class ever. If you follow along, put in the work and engage in class. <laughs> You'll find yourself noticing things you've learned in class everywhere, in your kitchen, outside, in the hallways, in the news. You will develop a great understanding of the world around you, how it works, and what we need to do to protect it. Plagiarizing directly from the College Board's description. This class is designed to engage you with the scientific principles, concepts, and methods required to understand the relationships within the natural world. You will identify and analyze natural and man-made environmental problems, evaluate risks associated with those problems, and examine solutions for resolving them. Now here's where I have to come with a little bit of bad news. See, every year I see a misconception where students think this is the easy AP class and I'm here to break your heart and tell you that you were misinformed. Let me explain. In AP Bio, you study biology. In AP Chem, you study chemistry, so on and so forth. What makes AP Environmental Science challenging is you're learning everything. Environmental science is an interdisciplinary field, and you will embrace topics from geology, biology, chemistry, physics, geography, law, history, sociology, and that's not even all of it. But what makes this class so challenging is also what makes it so much fun. There is always something new. There's always some new relationship to explore. And most importantly, you'll find after taking this class that you will be walking around somewhere and you'll notice something and you'll be able to explain how it works. Now, I find that to be very empowering, to know how parts of the world around you work. So here's how this class works. It's split between two main things, the science practices and the course content. The science practices are things you will learn to do, their actual actions, while the course content is the information that you are going to engage with, the topics you're going to learn. Let's start with the practices. In this class, you will learn how to explain environmental concepts, analyze visual representations, analyze sources of information, complete scientific experiments, analyze and interpret data like tables, charts, graphs. You're going to apply mathematical routines, which means you'll be doing math, but don't worry, you're allowed to use a calculator. And you will propose and justify solutions to environmental problems. As far as course content goes, there are four main themes that comprise this class. Energy transfers, interactions between Earth systems, interactions between species and their environment, and sustainability. The overall goal is to use the science practices to explore the themes of the class. So how do these videos work? And this is mostly for my students. My students already have their note guide, and these are your notes for the year. I will assign these videos to be done by a particular day, and I need them done before you come to class. All right? The goal here is to replace boring textbook readings that I'm certain most of you wouldn't do anyway, because when I was a student, I didn't do them, so no judgment, just saying. I also don't want to waste class time on lectures when we could be doing a lab or debating or going over a particularly difficult topic. What's in these videos and my notes are the basics, the vocabulary you need to know, the basic concepts and processes I need you to know before we delve into the specifics in class. For my kids, yes, you're getting credit for getting these done. Yes, it's going in as part of your grade, and no, you absolutely will not do well if you consistently fail to get these done on time. Here's how I expect you to work on these videos. I want you to sit down in front of your computer, not your cell phone on the ride to school, not by your locker the morning of, and not during your lunch period right before class. Sit down in front of your computer and have the notes out, the actual physical paper. Quickly read through the questions so you know what to listen for. As you're watching, pause the video when an important definition comes on the screen or if there's a diagram I need you to complete. 
In total, it should take you about 30 to 35 minutes to get through one video. On average, you get about one video per week assigned. On some occasion, it's two. If that sounds like a lot, it really shouldn't because it's the only homework I assign. Everything else, all projects, labs, discussions, debates, assignments, case studies, whatever, all of that is done in class. Nothing else should be homework. Let's be fair. This is a class where your teacher is beholden to a curriculum that is designed to prepare you for the AP exam. Now, the AP exam is going to have two parts, a multiple choice section and a free response uh, section. Those questions test how well you've mastered the science practices and your proficiency with course content. However, a more deep dive into the actual exam will be in a different video. Here are some tips from Mr. W's AP Survival Guide 1. Always be mindful of due dates and deadlines. This class moves fast. As soon as we finish one topic, we move on to another. If you fall behind, it is a grind to try to get back on pace. If you're assigned these videos, either by me or whoever your teacher is, watch this video series fully and completely. There are no lectures in my class. These videos are the lectures. This is called a flipped classroom. I need you to have the background on what you're doing in class and you must have watched these videos for the day they were assigned so you can actually engage in the labs, discussions, debates, and projects that we are going to be doing. Complete the associated notes fully and completely. There are some topics that are in these videos that I will not be discussing in class. However, you're still responsible for that information, whether or not it comes up in class, because it will be on the AP exam. It just means I find the topic not difficult enough to spend more time on. AP Classroom is the epitome of resources. On AP Classroom, you will have progress checks that test how well you are doing throughout the year. While I don't grade them for correctness because College Board literally tells me I can't, they are there so I can see how you are progressing to see what I need to spend more time on and what topics that y'all are comfortable with enough that I get to move on for. They will also be an excellent tool at the end of the year when you're trying to figure out, oh my God, there are so many topics, what do I need to study? Well, study the things that didn't go so great in the progress checks. If you wanna do any additional studying or preparing outside of class, literally anything narrated by David Attenborough will provide you with a lot of context and examples that might pop up in classroom discussion and on the exam, Planet Earth, Our Planet, Blue Planet, whatever, all those nature documentaries, brilliant. Just pick one and watch it while you're falling asleep or make a family movie night out of it, whatever. I cannot possibly recommend watching these more. Oh, me? You want to know more about me? Well, I've been described as the high key extra teacher. I've also been accused of being a harsh grader, but I find that uh, hurtful. I'm a fair grader. And believe me, you want my feedback to be blunt and heartless because the College Board has no regard for your emotions or sanity and will show you no mercy when they score your FRQs. So consider me practice. Um, outside of that, I studied environmental science and education at DePaul University in Chicago, where I focused on urban ecology, especially urban forestry and oak savanna restoration. I also did some work on the environment of Mars, and as far as education goes, what are the pedagogical best practices for science education in a lab-based course without using a textbook? So, literally what I'm doing now. It's fantastic. It's amazing. It's great. All right. Welcome to class, team. It's going to be a good year, but for now, go explore the outside.